as chairperson of Mtinda New Market, is they are facing a challenge of high commodity prices, mostly on the produce sold, which she says it's due to increasing fuel prices. It's challenging. The reason the price keeps on increasing every day. The price you, you buy today, tomorrow, when the items get finished, you go back, you get another different price. So that is why I'm saying it is challenging even to the customer. Today the customer comes to tell the customer this price. Tomorrow then it came a different price. So we are getting few customers so far. The, the prices of the commodities is too high. People, they don't have money. Maybe even the crisis of the COVID also brought a problem as a uh, lack of money. And uh, we have been with a longer drought which is also has brought that there is no commodities, the producers, they are not producing enough uh, items in the market. Uh, things now, the price is high and there is no profits. Government is set to read the national budget of 2022-2023. The traders share some of the expectations towards the budget read. Don't expect any big change. As a user, I have been following this for years, and I am old now, I know. What else do you think will uh, come fairly to <laughs> help the common man like me? I don't think. That is what I think. I don't think there will be a big change. They cut the prices of fuel. That's the issue. Because with the low prices of fuel, everything will come down. Yeah, here in third world countries, it is the prices of fuel that are governing the business. And in most cases, you find the government is not concerned. It has privatized the business of fuel to private individuals. It is not the government itself bringing in. Let the government come in and assist us. For me, I thought that uh, this budget will come down a bit as before, because the other way out was like a 40 trillion. I thought it would come down like to 35, so that uh, uh, people, most of the government has got some donations outside. And as our government has other things which is getting money, like minerals, so I expected this budget at least to be down. And uh, the allocation of the funds mostly it would have been located uh, in uh, medical. That's the first most thing which we have been targeting medical. Then from there in the Ministry of Trade and Industry. And uh, like yesterday I was watching Uganda, Korea and uh, Niger also uh, that uh, most of the countries are getting money in talents. They further call upon the government to intervene on the situation of high commodity prices that has hit them hard. Now in Tumba, Smart 24. Right. Now, that is the uh, situation coming in from uh, the national budget. Uh, the expectations of traders, like I said yesterday, everyone has got a different view of what they expect of the budget. It's a 48.1 trillion budget, and every sector wants allocations. Every sector wants different allocations from the government. Uh, but still, uh, with the national budget framework paper, you will still agree uh, that pretty much cases that are coming in through have been able to at least showcase uh, that Ugandans, uh, they're th those that are expectant, those who are optimistic, they're those who are anxious, and then they're those who are already disappointed, or those who are not expecting anything from the national budget, or they're not expecting any change because they've got already their emotions ready, already biased with the situation that the country is actually facing. So when you have a, a, uh, you're in such a situation where not everyone is actually happy with what is happening, uh, you will agree with me uh, that it becomes very, very difficult to convince anyone from that nature. But the expectations is that most of these traders are looking up to government. Uh, things are not easy. Things are not happening up. Uh, not only that, uh, when you look at commodity prices, very high. And that is why most of them are not expecting a lot. Others are expecting expecting that the government is going to come through and help them with the ongoing commodity prices, right, to check on the price fluctuations and stuff like that. But uh, we will still wait and break this down for you, uh, for the different sectors that will be receiving. And it's a pro-people budget, one thing for sure. 
to parish development model being a very huge pillar of this budget, money is going to reach where it has never reached. Those are some of the statements that I remember uh, during the, uh, the launch of the national budget. Is money reaching where it hasn't reached? I don't know whether it will reach me though. Uh, it has never reached me as well. But uh, most of the people should be optimistic according uh, to that. The parish development model was uh, well designed that in the first uh, few months of implementation, we'll have 17 million going to different parishes. So under those parishes are circles that will be receiving the money in there. So with the national budget ahead of us and the presentation coming up just shortly in a few days time to break down for you three days to go for the national cake uh, to be distributed to the Ugandans, which part of the cake will you receive? Which sector will receive the highest uh, portion or the biggest part of the cake? We'll wait and see. And uh, clearly uh, the national budget, there are a lot of expectations. So the traders still want uh, also the issue of collective collective situation. I just love uh, one of the gentlemen in, in the report who was actually mentioned something to do with government investing in different sectors like sport, uh, investing in various sectors will be a very key pillar for Uganda's economy or the strength of the economy. And we will definitely agree with that as well. We, as the Ugandans, were actually following up on the details to do with Uganda's economy. Okay. Now, Away from that, let's head to Djibouti. Uh, Djibouti is uh, an African country and it's uh, situated on the Horn of Africa. And uh, we having, we're looking at Djibouti's international free trade zone. And this is looked at as a trade and transport hub for many African countries, all linking the African countries to the coastline of Africa. So to the Eastern coastline of Africa. So when you look at this, Djibouti, which is a small country, uh, along the Horn of Africa, is at the center of global uh, trade routes, if you to look at this, and one of the two to three uh, busiest shipping routes in the world. Its location connects Africa to Asia, then there is a connection to Europe. There is also a connection to the Americas as you go around. So to take advantage of its strategic location, Djibouti has invested more than $1 billion in modernizing existing infrastructures and developing new world-class facilities, including ports and free trade zones. The main objective, uh, according to details, is to position Djibouti as a trade and transport hub for African countries. Now, these African countries, including the East African community, Uganda, Kenya, Tanzania, Rwanda, Burundi, because they are close there. Ethiopia, mention them, Somalia, Sudan, South Sudan and all that. So still following up on this is that Smart 24 Television um, had someone in Djibouti to see some of these facilities and we know uh, for sure that there's a lot of opportunities that have arise in Djibouti. So for the traders out there in Uganda, uh, the chances are there for you to at least utilize them because the space is there connecting you to Europe, Asia and the Americas. Let's have the details of this one. Um, uh, the, the, we work with a system uh, which allowed us actually to do everything online. Uh, so we are glad we started this a couple of years ago when the COVID hit uh, uh, the, the international scene. And we um, started doing everything. These were the requirements actually of the companies that wanted to be established here. And we answered their uh, queries uh, by doing what? Um, facilitating, of course, the procedures. Um, doing everything online, online registration, which is, uh, we are glad to say now we are 100% of the companies established in the free zone are um, registered online. So everything is online, including the payment, which is online as well. So imagine when uh, everything is done online, yes. So this is what we're promoting right now. You don't need to come, let's say, from Uganda to register your free zone company. Take the example. Djibouti, Uganda. How far Uganda is from the sea? We are offering the Great Lake countries the third corridor. Dar es Salaam, Mombasa, what they call the central, central corridor. corridor, and the north corridor to the Red Sea. So we need to go from Ethiopia, the roads already built, through South Sudan, Milu. What is the name of the... the Mar Mar yeah? 
No, 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 the border with, between, uh, yeah? Elegu. To go to uh, Uganda? Yay! Yeah. To go to Central African Republic. So on this belt, we have more than 400 million population consumers, traders, and the planet is 70% water. That's why maritime transportation is very important and essential. All right. Now, transportation is very key in uh, terms of business. We can all agree with that uh, because transportation links different destinations or different business people to different destinations. You are transporting goods. You are transporting commodities. You are making these commodities. You're taking these commodities to places. That means you have to you know, transport them. You have to take them to different destinations. And that is uh, the point of argument there. So uh, clearly, transportation being a very key and uh, pivotal aspect of pretty much, I would say, business and a key pillar in business. So that is why Djibouti is actually investing and has invested billions of dollars in modernizing existing infrastructure uh, to link up to the other African countries and to link up with the other, uh, even with the East African community. Why? Because a country with a coastline is more... Uh, is standing more chances of managing goods for countries that are landlocked, countries like ours, Uganda, South Sudan. Uh, you can look at countries like Rwanda, Burundi. So uh, linking all these countries that are landlocked and you are managing the exports and imports is important. Though one would still think of the journey between Uganda and Djibouti being long and we would opt for Kenya and Tanzania. It doesn't rule off Djibouti though uh, because they still have world-class facilities that have been set. Uh, they still connect to the coast. They connect directly to Asia and Europe. So uh, you can still look at it as a chance uh, to at least export and import and an opportunity for our traders and also majorly uh, our local importers and exporters to at least utilize this opportunity that arises from there and in Djibouti. And, and, and yes, we can all agree. We can, we can still move on, on the same track with that as that trade and transport definitely move hand in hand so with trade transport moving hand in hand you always have to improve the transport routes that are going to connect different destinations to different countries and different markets to different destinations that is the beauty about uh, moving in space and that is the beauty about business prevailing the beauty of seeing that business continuously grows in one way or the other. So Djibouti uh, looks more of a small country in the own of Africa but it's a center of global trade routes on one or two, three busiest uh, shipping routes in the world. So it is one of the busiest uh, shipping routes in the world. You compare it to the likes of Dar es Salaam on the coast of Africa, on the coast of Africa, Dar es Salaam, uh, Mombasa, Tanga, then switch to Djibouti, the other side. And uh, they have tried to modernize uh, different existing infrastructure. They've tried to improve on how they do business in Djibouti. They've tried to at least make it easier for the African countries uh, to use their routes as well and that is investments worth billions of dollars so that you could uh, you can clearly see what african countries are doing to shape up their economies they are trying to shape up uh, their economies because they do believe with shaping up they are creating room for other african countries uh, to at least link up with them and business prevails and infrastructure being one of the most pivotal um, path to successful and um, definitely huge development programs that happen that is where we're drawing this particular <coughs> argument. And we were uh, having a team in Djibouti uh, the past few days, and they gathered for us that particular report. So for, for all the details that you're actually having in more, you'll get more uh, with our next programming here on Smart24 to understand more <coughs> from what is coming in from the side of Djibouti. All right, now with four minutes to the half hour mark, we're heading into a break. When I do return, I've got for you the press review. As this time around, we're going to be looking at stories that are making headlines from the different papers, uh, try to break them down. And then later on in the third hour of the show, we shall be going on ground to see a more advanced picture of uh, what is happening from the world of entertainment in Uganda. But meanwhile, let's head into a break. When I do return, I've got the press review and more.